this is a pattern that I cut out of paper and I glued it on an eighth inch piece of plywood. That way I can reuse the pattern for other times. The block was three inches high and four inches wide. So I can get four out of each of these otters. I'm just going to cut them loose from the block and then I'll be able to slice them down later. You'll notice that there is quite a bit of water damage in this block. I think the block had set out in the weather and the water got down in through it and stained it. I'm going to just cut up what I can you know, if there's some water damaged otters. I'm going to use them to show the direction of your knife cuts when you're carving them. Coming up here really quick, watch the bandsaw blade. I had a little mishap with the blade coming off the wheels and I had to diagnose what was wrong and get it going again. Here I'm looking for a wobble. If your blade wobbles, you've got not enough tension, but it's not wobbling. A couple things can make them slip off the wheel. One is a loose blade. Another is pulling it back and letting it slip out of the groove on the top guide. And another is what I happened to do this time was to push it a little too fast and it it actually pushed off the bottom wheel and uh, the tension was fine and everything else was working good. Here I'm resawing them down into individual otters. If you have a 3 16 skip tooth blade you can use a straight fence you don't have any drift. Uh, any larger blade or smaller teeth space uh, you'll have drift. Now I have to put in the center lines. I'm going to put a center line on both sides and actually one all the way around the top and the bottom. I'm just using one of my fingers against the edge of the board and at the front and the back I have to cheat a little bit and tilt the pencil to get it to stay in the center. But we just approximate the center line. And on the top and bottom, I just estimate the center. I check it by doing the other side, find the in between those two marks, and then draw it. This gives you a good idea how far to round it over. The taper at the tail and also at the nose, I just estimate. I just freehand draw it. Uh, when I get to doing that, I will carve them in. And this is just a whittling project. It doesn't have to be exact. Now let's get ready to carve. I use a thumb guard on my thumb. I have a bad habit of carving up to my thumb. I used to use a carving glove on my holding hand, but I learned that I don't really need the carving glove. But if you're a beginner, it's good to use a carving glove. It'll stop a slash cut into your hand. I'm going to speed it up here, but you can see how I carve. I'll carve downhill, coming down from the feet to that bottom part. And then you have to go back and forth to keep it always going downhill. If you carve uphill, You'll notice that the knife will catch, and if you catch, just turn your piece around, carve downhill. Notice that I'm always carving away from my hand. If my hand is there, I like to keep a piece of wood between the knife and my hand, or else be pushing away from my holding hand. Now I am rounding him off, and the center lines, I like to keep them. You notice I carve up to the center line, both on the side and on the bottom and round it over and 
each time you cut, if you round just a little bit further, your cuts will be easier to slice. These inside curves on the belly and around the feet are actually your hardest part to carve because the direction of the grain switches back and forth and you have to just keep going downhill. Now I'm ready to cut that taper on the tail and a little bit around on the nose. So I'm just going to cut it off pretty rough, get it the basic shape that I want as far as tapering. And then I'm going to come back, you'll notice, and put my center line back in. Keep looking at your top view to make sure that the left side matches the right side. Keep checking back and forth. All right, here it comes. I'm going to put my center line back in. I'm just going to do it the same way I did the beginning. Just an estimate to keep me from carving it too thin. I'll leave that center line on there as I round it out. And it's always a good idea to put your details back in, stop your carving, draw a little bit with a pencil, and that'll give you perspective on what you're carving, what you want to carve next, and where you're going with it. Here I'm shaping the head and keeping it flat at first, just rounding it off on both sides, and then I'll go ahead and shape the head after I get that looking good. Here I gotta take a break, and then later I think I need my helper. We need a kitty on my lap to give me inspiration. Come on. That moan you heard come out of me is my creaky knees. They don't work Come so on. good anymore. And I said earlier that he was 14, but I was wrong. He's 18 years old and he needs help jumping up also. Here I'm going to speed up really fast. This is eight times the speed that I was really carving. I looked back and I estimated out how much time it took me to carve this, judging from the film I shot, and it took about 30 minutes to do the whole thing. And that doesn't include any of the bandsaw work or blocking it out. Notice still that I'm carving downhill. Keep it going downhill, it makes it easier. I'm going to show you how I sanded these uh, after sharpening my knife so it's sharp the next time I want to carve. I'll go ahead and mount up the sanding equipment that I use on my lathe. It makes it easy. This is a pneumatic drum sander. It, it's filled with air and it's squishy so it goes around the corners really good. Then after that I use a flap sander. If you wanted to do it all by hand It'd be best to start with 80 grit and go to 100 grit and then go to 220 and possibly finer if you wanted it even smoother. And here's the flap sander. I run it about 500 RPMs and it really works pretty well. It does round off all the details. If you have fine details you want to save, you can protect them with masking tape. 